But let's pray, shall we? Lord, we pray that you would come to us again and bless us and be our teacher, lead us into truth, give us a zeal for the gospel and for your glory, even as we talk again about the subject of evangelism. We want to be obedient servants of Christ Jesus, so strengthen us by your grace. Uh, to that end, not only from the word we received in worship today, but even now as, our, as we have this class, bless us, Lord, we pray in Jesus' name, amen. So I was scrambling because I had intended all week to uh, seek out one of our, our uh, Filipino members of our church to make sure I didn't butcher the name of the, uh, the, the one who wrote this chapter, Brian G. Najapfor. <laughs> He's a Filipino brother um, who apparently I was going to say a little bit about, and now the information is, what happened? The dog ate my homework. Okay. Every single one, I, I was not at the conference where, these, where they spoke, and so I, every single one I kind of uh, wanted to say a little bit about. This is a brother who had studied in, in the Philippines and then came over and ended up becoming, he was a pastor in the Philippines and then became a URC uh, minister over here. He furthered his studies that I think it reformed. You know who this individual is? Brian Najapfor. So that this, we're in chapter 7 of the book, and it's, it's written by, it says, Brian G. Najap for with Josh Deere. Now, as I Googled Josh Deere, I think he's an editor, so probably he helped with the editing. Um, anyway, he is a, as I said, he studied in the Philippines, served as a pastor there, and then came over and um, furthered his studies. Uh, I guess, that, I, think, I think at, um, at Reformed Presbyterian, or Reformed Puritan, seminary and ended up becoming a URC pastor for years and now is, uh, I guess, getting his PhD. Uh, in God's providence, we had our missions conference and in some ways, what, the way he began was really, or, the, or really this lesson is some of the same, repeating some of the same themes, talking about the things that um, we consider. Let me read, it's interesting that he launches as he, as he challenges us, he, he, he uses kind of his launching pad for his lesson is the calling of Moses. And you remember Moses' own uh, fears uh, and feelings of inadequacy himself. And so we'll look at those things. But basically what he does here in this chapter um, is makes the... Okay. How's that? Is that better? Can you hear me well? basically makes the chapter, um, makes the case in this chapter that all believers are called to do the work of evangelism. Very, very consistent, I think, with everything we heard at the, uh, at the um, missions conference. I, I, don't, I doubt anyone here would disagree with that. I did wonder even, and I was challenged not only at the conference, but here um, in this chapter with regards... With, with whether I've been a little bit too soft myself and coming in, preaching from Jonah, talking about we have different gifts, and you know, sometimes it's true. The New Testament describes the, uh, the, the Christian life as a life of a quiet life, work with your hands, mind your own affairs, basically. Don't say anything stupid and make me look bad. It feels like Paul is saying at times. Um, uh, but, but, but all believers are called to, uh, to share the gospel as God gives us opportunities and... Uh, and there was no, no question about that in the, with regards to the exhortation we received at the conference and then here um, in this chapter. And it's interesting with regards to feelings of inadequacy and gifts um, that Moses himself, who was the, the parad paradigmatic, the prototypical, the prophet himself, said, I'm, I can't speak. And uh, we'll, we'll talk a little bit about that at the end um, as he, he gives us basically... Uh, five reasons. Let's see, I've lost the first one. <laughs> Anyone wants to help me because I lost my homework. The, 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 because I'm forgetting. It's a way of life, thank you. And I thought that was very consistent. Do you remember the way it was said in the, uh, we're going to run out of time quickly, so I'll get us through this. And I want us to, and I want to focus primarily on the last part where he basically says, right now I know you by nature are excuse makers. You, make, you have good excuses. In fact, I'll help you. I'm going to give you, these are the main excuses, the main reasons people give where they can't evangelize. Um, but there are five reasons. 
kind of making the case why every Christian should be involved in the work of evangelism. Evangelism is a way of life. Um, we were encouraged, I think it was by Reverend Shaw, to do in our churches, in our lives, to seek to develop what? Remember that word he used? What's that? Relationships, good. Uh, blank of evangelism. A, a, a conversation, a culture. A culture. It's so much part of our, our habit, right? It's not just something that we see as an event here and there. And that, that was good. That was helpful and challenging. A culture of evangelism. Um, so it's a way of life. The second one he says, I'm going to go through these kind of quickly. I think that was where he, um, let's see, let me look at I've got the book in front of me anyway. Thank you. That is so well summarized in notes and then lost. Oh, it's the essence of our identity. Okay, what's the fr- okay way of life? Very good. Okay, yes. There's where he cites Acts chapter eight verse four, which after the persecution of Stephen, the believers were scattered, and what did they go and do? They all they went and they preached. Um, and, and it speaks of the, the, these were not only ordained ministers. Obviously, it's not preaching in the same sense that the ordained minister is called to preach the word of God. But in a more general sense, all believers called to preach. Um, the second one was that evangelism, evangelism is the very essence of our identity. Think about that. In union with Christ, he says, that the, the, being, being united to Christ by the Spirit, sharing his anointing, um, it's the very essence of who we are. And he cites the Heidelberg Catechism, question 32. But why art thou called a Christian? Because I am a member of Christ by faith and thus am partaker of his anointing. Cites uh, Acts chapter 2, verse 17, which, which uh, cites the prophecy of Joel. In the last days it shall be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Interesting the way that the Spirit poured out, God pouring out his Spirit on all flesh. It, this is not simply something that was taking place with respect to the ordained office, but all were anointed with the Spirit, given the Spirit of prophecy in that sense. And so he argues that really united to Christ, partaking of his anointing, we all become, in, in some sense, in general sense, we all become prophets, priests, and kings. We are all prophets. Um, and then the third thing is that evangelism arises from what? Anyone remember these? You read it? Rises from a love for our neighbors. The golden rule, Matthew 22, verse 39. And a second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. If your neighbor's house was burning down, you'd love your neighbor enough to go and tell your neighbor. And certainly the state of your neighbor's soul is more important than his or her house. If we love our neighbor, we'll have a heart to evangelize our neighbors. The fourth one was evangelism originates, he says, in the very nature of our God. 1 John chapter 4, verse 10, In this is love, not that we have loved God, but that he loved us and sent his Son to be the propitiation for our sins and then, interestingly, the fifth one is the, what you would typically, the text you'd use as the launching pad for a call to evangelism. What's the last one? The Great Commission. Um, evangelism is a command set forth in the Great Commission. Now, why does he not, why, why did he pick that one last? He wanted to talk about those other things because, they, because the last one is the one that sort of produces guilt. He didn't want it to be he wanted the motivation, and, and, and his point is well taken. Our motivation for evangelism is not we live in guilt. We're under the command of Christ, and we're not obeying his command, and therefore we feel guilty. Um, but gratitude, gratitude. But he's able to lay on a, a little bit of guilt, and <laughs> I think, in the last part. So did, does anyone here want to dispute that point that every, every Christian, or, or bring another perspective, in, in one way or another, every Christian is called to be given to the work of evangelism. And, oh, oh, okay, go ahead.
<laughs> well, there's the question. Well, have you ever tried just knocking on your neighbor's door? You know, I was just reading Matthew chapter 28, and <laughs> I, I tend to think that, uh, that building relationships is the best way. Um, and that helps us kind of launch into the next, the, the, the last part dealing with kind of, dealing with the question of, to the extent that we don't do it, and there is a place for feeling conviction, saying, Lord, help us. I mean, I appreciated where uh, Reverend Shaw saying, I don't want to, I don't want to lay guilt on us. I, that, that's kind of the heart I had in coming here. The last thing I want to do is to start, what's wrong with you losers? Why aren't you doing the evangelism you're called to do? That's not the most effective way to encourage obedience and progress and growth and grace. And I, I have my own weaknesses and challenges. I can tell you, I found it a lot easier to be actively evangelizing when I was a missionary. And everyone knew I was there, and it was so easy to talk about the gospel. And here I am in Raleigh. And, and, uh, but yeah, we, 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 had, we, had, we had dinner last night with some neighbors. Um, we didn't, and they know we're missionaries. We've talked about you know, who we are. And they knew we were missionaries. No, I'm a pastor. Um, know who we are. But, I, but I, my, my goal is to build friendships and see how the Lord may open doors to, uh, to do that. I, I think that's wise. So I think, go ahead. Yeah, Ray. Yeah. I feel like we heard that recently. Someone, what's that? Oh, good. Very good. Caruso, Acts chapter 8, yeah. So, good. So we'll hear more about that. Let me, in the last few minutes, quickly, I'll be honest, the reasons he gave, the, the sort of excuses, he was drawing on the call of Moses, and we, can, we all probably know the, 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 the text very well. When Moses was called, he was not eager. He was not zealous. He was first saying, who am I? And he said, there's, there's the number one excuse. But what I started to say is, I, I didn't find these necessarily, I didn't identify so much with these particular excuses as I look at my own life. I have my own excuses, I think, why sometimes I don't evangelize as I ought to. So I want us to kind of interact on that level. You may, you may say, no, this is exactly, this speaks well to my own experience, but the first was a feeling that he's too old, too weak, and so of course God promised his presence and Christ has empowered us has promised us his presence, of course, as we go forth. So the first excuse was, who am I? The second was, what shall I say? He was afraid, he was afraid to go to Pharaoh and to go to Israel, wasn't he? Um, what am I going to say? Of course, what does the Lord powerfully reveals? His own name, tell them I am. Who, 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 who am I to send? Tell them, sent me. Tell them that I am, I am who I am. And I am has sent me to you. Um, the third, oh yeah, and, and, and we're reminded that on one level, the gospel message is so simple, isn't it? Don't worry about having answers to, profound answers to the problem, problem of sin and things like that. The simple gospel message, believe on the Lord Jesus and you will be saved. Um, that, that, that's encouraging. But So those are the first two ex uh, excuses. Who am I? What shall I say? And maybe for some of you, yeah, that's a struggle. I don't know what to say as a pastor and one who is an evangelist, missionary evangelist in many years. I don't, I don't have any problem 
what to say myself, worrying about what to say. The third one, he says, they will not believe me. And interesting that, uh, that, that, that even though the Lord promises his presence, Moses is somehow doubtful that, the Lord is, that they're going to believe his message, and so he promises to perform miracles and so forth. That's when the staff is turned into the serpent, his own hand turned and becomes leprous and so forth. The fourth one, he says, I'm not eloquent. And uh, God reminds him that he's the one who created the mouth and promised his presence um, the same way. As I mentioned, Jesus did for his disciples as well. Interesting that the Apostle Paul was also not eloquent, was he? <laughs> and, uh, and yet he boldly went on to persuade, despite his lack of oratory skills, his lack of eloquence, he could stand before King Agrippa. I was just reading about King Agrippa, and when he's on trial, he can actually turn it around, and it's almost like this king is the one on trial, and he recognizes you're persuading me to be a Christian, um, aren't you, Paul? Yeah, actually he was. Um, and then the last one was, the last excuse, please send someone else. Please send someone else. <laughs> and so finally, of course, God agrees. To, God is angry with him at that point, um, but he does accommodate his weakness in the sense that he uses as an opportunity to raise up Aaron and teach about the prophetic office. Um, so those are the excuses. I, let, let me, we only have five minutes left. I, I guess I would say, do you identify with those? Or can you think of what the, those excuses or the reasons that would be on your list, um, which might not be on this list? Go ahead, Jim. Okay. Yeah. Good. Mm hmm. And isn't that basically it? Fear of rejection. We, we don't want to be different. We want to blend in. And here's the challenge with, you, you know, we had such a great li time last night. I thought, this is good. We want to be getting to know our neighbors, developing friendships, relationships. Um, and I appreciated the distinction between outreach and evangelism. Outreach is just being out there, being enabled, you know, building relationships like that in order to open up opportunities. But, but the challenge is, I'd rather just keep it at that level. I don't want to be different. I want to be one of the group. I want to have a great time. I want to be looked at as not being different. <laughs> and so the challenge I think many of you maybe face is you get so comfortable with people and, and, there's, and you never do take the opportunity to move on beyond that and talk about, talk about the gospel. And by the way, his definition was, and I don't have my first page where I put it down, it was basically proclaiming or announcing the good news, right? How was the, uh, I, think it was, I think it was Shaw who cited styles, and it was not just simply announcing the good news, but what? Pers with a, with seeking to do what? Seeking to persuade. Seeking to persuade. At what point do you stop simply being a nice guy? Um, but if you really love your neighbor, you're going to at some point try to press the gospel in loving ways, and obviously that takes wisdom, and I don't think necessarily knocking on the door right away is the best way. I, I've done open-air preaching. I've done cold turkey evangelism, which looks very different, and I think that can be useful, but probably the most effective way that we're going to evangelize the world is to love our neighbors, look for opportunities. But at some point, an invitation to church is, is a message, isn't it? It's saying, what I have is not something that I just want to keep to myself. I think, I think you need what I have, too. And so, Pastor Matt has his hand up.
Very good. I, mean, I hope it's encouraging. It was to me even to hear, even to hear Reverend Shaw say, anyone have, you know, have fears? And, yeah, me too. And just to sort of address those fears and, and pray for each other. And, you know, there were some good practical points. Anybody got any short stories to share? That was Chris, Chris Hartshorn, who was in my former presbytery, Southern California. Um, and maybe something like that we, we might think about implementing, you know, beginning our prayer meeting or something with the, Individuals that we are seeking to share the gospel with in our lives and encourage each other. And so, yeah, we're out of time. I knew it would go fast. Go ahead, Greg. Yeah, it's, it's good. at the risk of opening a can of worms. <laughs> I see we're at the end of time. But when you say, I might be wrong, are you, are you saying we, we should even kind of adopt the position when we're doing evangelism that we might be wrong about the gospel? Should um, we? Should we? No. Oh, sure, okay. Yeah. Yeah, to say, to say, you know, I'm not sure that's a good question. I don't claim to have all the answers. It, to go in it with a humility, um, you're a real human, they're a, they are real humans. One thing we really, really had to work to guard against in Karamoja, when we're going in to, to help these people, is not to kind of go in an attitude, these people are helpless and they have nothing to teach us. Or We, we, we wanted to do everything we could to purge ourselves of any superiority complex. Um, I mean, we were going in to help with material needs as well as the gospel, but it shows respect to people when you treat them as image bearers of God who have good in them, common grace good, and they have things that, um, that they can teach you. I, I, I was happy about the fact that I never became skilled in moving, removing these little jigger parasites in our toes. The Karen Mojong were so good at that, and they were willing to help me, and why not just always ask them, could you help me remove these things? 
Um, and <laughs> now you're all looking horrified, like, <laughs> I'll tell you about jiggers. <laughs> but they had skills and they had knowledge of the world that, that we needed to learn too. And when you're presenting the gospel at, in that level, uh, in getting down to their level more and more, absolutely, and even, I think even there's something that said about even presenting the gospel in a humble way that I'm just a fallen creature who's come to understand God's truth. I, I, I mean, I hesitate to say we could even sort of go into it assuming maybe we'll be wrong. Maybe at the end of the day I'll be convinced you know, to become a, a, Bud, a Buddhist or a Muslim. No, we're convinced the gospel is absolutely true and that that most basic truth, our goal, is to press that and persuade, but to do it in a humble way. Um, but to pray for opportunities to get to that point where we are you know, not in arrogance, but yes, wanting to, to, to press them, to challenge them lovingly that they need, they need the gospel too. Go ahead. Let, last, I'll let, this is Adrian's last opportunity to teach us. So I'll give you the final word and you teach us, brother. Good, good. Thank you. Well, why don't we close? I promised that I'd give him the last word, so I'm not going to say anything else other than to pray. Lord, help us. We confess our sin. We pray that you would forgive us for where we've been unfaithful. We pray that we would be encouraged. We pray that we would remember how much you've loved us and that indeed it would be your love filling us and overflowing that we would look to our neighbors, friends, those with whom we interact and that we would love them and want to share the gospel. Give us grace and wisdom as how best to do that and make us faithful in this. Bless us this Lord's Day. Help us to worship and rest and be strengthened so that we would eagerly serve you all of our, all of our days. Lord, now hear us and dismiss us again with your blessing resting upon us and return us to the worship this evening for the glory of your name. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen.